Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Vishrut. I am a senior product manager at Microsoft Teams Engineering. Uh, with me, I have uh, Arvind uh, Sankar Subramaniam, uh, a senior PM on my team on Microsoft Teams Engineering. Uh, Arvind and I are very happy to welcome you to the Ask the Expert session, uh, which is a Q&A session following up on uh, uh, the Transforming the Modern Workplace with Teams platform session that you would have uh, heard Michael and uh, Archana from Teams Engineering deliver. Uh, the session, uh, just to recap, uh, for folks who have attended that or who, have, who are new to the Ask, uh, Ask the Expert session, uh, Michael and Archana have covered a number of topics, including uh, an overview of Teams platform, uh, plus uh, you know some of the new innovations that we are announcing at Ignite, uh, including giving you a sneak peek of you know some of the new powerful capabilities that are getting added, uh, real life scenarios of how partners and customers are actually going to leverage that. What are the uh, capabilities going to power uh, once once you see these live in a few weeks? Uh, and they've also given you a sneak peek of you know what's coming up in the future, uh, trying to give you a holistic idea of Teams as a platform and what innovation and what user productivity scenarios you can actually drive uh, using Teams. So I think the uh, what we basically expect to use the next 30 minutes in this uh, Ask the Expert session is uh, with the help of the SMEs that we have on the call and with all of you as attendees, make this an interactive Q&A session. Uh, for Teams platform, any topics that Michael and Archana have actually covered, if you want to kind of uh, discuss and go deep dive uh, into it, happy to do that. And I'll be using this session deck from time to time if that helps elaborate uh, my point. Uh, so Arvind, uh, over to you. If you have questions already on the chat, like feel free to uh, pick up and ask. Yeah, there was a question on sneak peek into whatever uh, Michael and Arjuna spoke about. Got it. So let me actually uh, use the session slideware for that. Uh, so I think most of the folks are aware about uh, uh, the Teams platform capabilities. So if you can actually see my screen, uh, you would probably uh, already be familiar about the various Teams platform capabilities that we have. Uh, you can use tabs, you can use you know, hosted experiences, uh, personal apps. You can build conversational experience, which are bots. You can use messaging extensions to actually, uh, you know, uh, enrich the conversations and the and the group collaboration scenarios that uh, you do on Teams uh, with information and objects from the SaaS applications. Uh, you can use task modules, which are dialogue experiences, using which you can basically uh, get the user to fill in information or consume information in a focused manner. You can use connectors and webhooks, the good old connectors and webhooks allow you to basically stay aware and the entire team to actually stay aware of what's happening in external systems and then of course notifications which are basically uh, the bread and butter these days for all of us to get uh, you know, a sneak peek into what's happening and what is it that we need to basically take action upon first, right? So this is basically how the session uh, was basically started by Michael and Archana. So they actually covered and quickly flashed all the Teams platform capabilities and the various tools and frameworks that you can use to basically build the Teams uh, app of your choice, right? Ranging from the Microsoft Bot framework to you know any any of the popular web technologies, including uh, including Angular. Uh, React.js, HTML5. You can use uh, your existing investments on SharePoint. You can actually use our latest and greatest rich card framework, which is adaptive cards. Uh, you can power intelligence in your applications using Microsoft Graph. And of course, Power Apps, which are the low code, no code way of building quick business applications uh, is also something which is integrated on Teams, right? So I think this session started over here. And just as a recap, uh, Michael and Richard did not spend a lot of time on basically taking us through each of the platform capabilities, but what they really focused on were basically these two new capabilities which we are announcing and in uh, uh, in uh, uh, Ignite as an event. And immediately after Ignite, is, uh, the, these capabilities will actually be uh, available for our partners and our, our, uh, our customers to actually leverage and build more engaging applications on Teams. So if you can see my screen, 
uh, these two capabilities are basically uh, the meeting extensibility or teams integration with meetings and the second one is uh, the new uh, you know power platform integrations and a more seamless integration with our power platform uh, right from within teams right uh, it's essentially going to allow developers to build solutions that transcend and go beyond chats and channels and build workflows and bring in their SaaS experiences seamlessly into meetings so that engagement as well as decision making in meetings can actually be enriched, right? And on the second uh, uh, hand, with the low code, no code developers in enterprises now, uh, uh, you know, really, really turning to Power Platform and to bring their experience into, into Teams, uh, the new integration and the new surface areas that we are opening up for Power Platform integrations in Teams allows the these developers to accelerate the digital transformation through uh, these new advanced capabilities, right? So these are the two things that basically were announced uh, by uh, you know us at, at at Ignite, and then what you see in the following screens, or what you if, if you have actually attended the session, uh, we've actually gone into great details about uh, you know what uh, uh, these capabilities can actually deliver, and what some of the partners that are launching these capabilities uh, they are basically uh, uh, you know utilizing this for. Arvind, does that help? Yeah. Uh, one question that I can see on the uh, Q&A is that like, sure. is there a way to control the policies uh, for meeting extensibility, basically policies like pre-meeting, during the meeting and post-meeting? Yeah, this is something which uh, uh, is definitely uh, what we have heard from our other users as well. Uh, as we build and launch meeting extensibility features and capabilities into Teams, there is definitely uh, going to be a big focus on uh, on the app policies and the fact that you know tenant admins can basically control you know what kind of apps can be added in meetings, what can be app, uh, how how can actually you uh, how can you make sure that you know there are certain apps that are allowed or like enabled or disabled to be added into like meetings which is in line with the organization's policies, right? So this is something that is certainly uh, going to be, you know, uh, an area which we'll actually work with. For now, when we are launching meeting accessibility, in the launch experience that will go live in a couple of weeks after Ignite, uh, we will basically be allowing for the end users to actually bring in those apps which are which have uh, uh, built their meeting extensibility scenarios right and that's something that the app developers are going to specify in the app manifest file so only those apps can manually be added in the pre-meeting experience and in the post-meeting experience while the meeting is actually getting scheduled right the policy based uh, uh, you know control of meetings is something that will actually get delivered uh, uh, once we move ahead in the meeting lifecycle uh, program Uh, one interesting question, like if you have to call out like one favorite new capability in Teams, and what would that be? Oh, uh, like meeting extensibility is definitely a favorite area for me, but if you really ask me about one favorite new capability, it is uh, among the whole sphere of meeting extensibility and the surface areas that we are actually picking up, right? Uh, in my mind, the, the most useful that I see is going to be the meeting notification bubbles. So let me actually use the uh, slide to kind of talk a little bit more about that. So if you see, uh, if you see this as as an experience that we are powering in our uh, in our meetings. So if you see this bubble that you see uh, as a as a form collection uh, uh, bubble while you are inside the meeting, I think this is going to be a game changer. If you really ask me, a lot of times, uh, it's especially in large meetings, right? It is actually a, a, a pretty well defined and well experienced problem to basically have a, a you know a real time input collection or real time feedback collection in large meetings, right? Uh, if you have say you know 200 people in a meeting, right? Uh, if you ask a question, uh, there are only two ways for people to basically respond, right? Either you ask everyone to basically type in their responses on chat, or you are asking people to unmute themselves and basically say yes or no. Right. Think of a quick poll scenario saying, hey, so we discussed the entire proposal. Those who are in for uh, or in favor of the proposal, those who are actually not in favor of the proposal, I even a quick poll like this is something which is not, uh, you know, a very easy thing to do in meeting experiences of today. Now, if you look at this new notification bubble uh, as a surface area with in Teams meeting accessibility, this really allows you to basically, uh, you know, handle such scenarios with much ease. 
wherein a custom app experience can be built by the uh, by the SaaS application, which is being used to run polls, which is being used to actually collect feedback during the meetings. And at the push of a button, which let me actually show you at the push of a button, for example, like this, uh, the if, if, if you can still see my screen, uh, you can basically click up uh, the meeting organizer can actually click a button, uh, start a new poll and upon the click of post, Every meeting attendee will basically be served with uh, a dialog box or a notification that will actually come on top of the meeting surface. So it's it's kind of like a blocking UI, right, which comes on top of it and that allows the users to actually interact with the uh, uh, with the SaaS experience alongside the meeting. So uh, a quick pause of five seconds and people can actually uh, choose their options. Yes, no. Uh, in favor of proposal against the proposal and also like collect more sophisticated inputs. For example, they can type in their responses as a, you know, as as a free text feedback. Basically everything that you can do in bot uh, uh, cards and adaptive cards in a normal, uh, you know, chat and channel experience uh, of interacting with an app, you can now do that inside a meeting. So my favorite surface area for meeting extensibility, uh, new features that we have actually announced is actually this notification bubble and I can't even stop thinking about the kind of scenarios that we can basically power uh, through this experience. That's right, Vishal. Yeah. So, of course, today we could ask questions over the chat and answer it, but that that context is not transferred back to an application like Jira when Absolutely. you're talking about Scrum and feedback and the content notification transfers that context back to the application directly from the meeting. Yeah. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, how about you? I know Arvind, you have actually worked with a number of our launch partners, right? So uh, if I quickly flash this slide, uh, you can see like we have a good lineup of uh, you know our ISVs uh, plus a few Microsoft apps who are basically building uh, uh, their experiences using the uh, uh, using the new meetings extensibility features, right? I know you've worked with a couple of them. Uh, any call outs, any favorites? Do you know what kind of scenarios they're building? Uh, that, yeah. are user, uh, that our attendees can find useful. Sure, like uh, two partners that I want to call out are on scramble and monday.com, uh, which we are closely involved with. On scramble, of course, is an analytics platform where you could build like really creative dashboards mm -hmm. and intelligent dashboards, bringing that dashboard in the context of a meeting and talking about really specific points. And then at the end of the meeting, sending that board and insights back to the attendees at the end of the meeting was was a unique experience that unscramble has built with your qbo app on on team store monday.com is the other call out uh, that i want to make it's on the project management space uh, again they have a really beautiful project management boards that you could build out of out of the box templates you mm -hmm. could now bring that into a meeting and then discuss in the context of of that very specific board. So you're able mm -hmm. to set the context by adding the board before the meeting. So every participant understands what this meeting is going to be about. And during the meeting, they are focused about the specific work items on the board. And of course, all of the content, the notes from the meeting are automatically captured during the meeting and it's available post the meeting to all of the attendees. So those are two callouts that I make for meeting extensibility. Of course, mm -hmm. they're going to be launched along with uh, with meeting extensibility when Teams platform goes live. With meeting extensibility, these are two partners that will have support for meeting extensibility from day one. Awesome, that's actually good to know, and really encourage you know our attendees to uh, to basically try this out and. Uh, you know, give feedback so that you know we can get work with our partners and customers to build more uh, engaging scenarios uh, onto Teams. Cool. We can probably pick up like if there are more questions from uh, from the chat or from attendees. Yeah, one of the questions that I would want to ask, like that also came up in one of the questions is uh, like the single sign on for tabs within Teams platform today. Uh, if you could touch upon that and uh, and the support for Azure AD with single sign on for third party mm -hmm. apps and for developers, that will be great. great yeah. 
Oh, okay, great. So I think thanks, thanks, uh, uh, Arvind, for actually asking that. I think uh, single sign-on uh, is something which has been a long pending ask. Uh, right from I remember when we launched the Teams platform, uh, sign in into apps uh, when the user is already signed in into Microsoft Teams, right, was actually seen as a friction for our, for our users, for our developers, and everybody was basically asking us, how can we basically get users to get started using our, uh, with, with, with our app, especially the first time when they, uh, when they interact with an app, how can we make it easy and frictionless for the users to basically experience the app without the hassle of actually keening their usernames and their passwords and going through authentication and so on. So I think happy to announce that, you know, we've made like great progress in the in this area. Uh, single sign-on using Azure Active Directory, which is basically Basically, the sign-in mechanism that is used for all Microsoft services, including Teams, right? This is something that third-party app developers and our customers also can leverage today on Teams, right? And we are actually fast following up uh, uh, to bring this capability to bots as well, uh, because a lot of the application developers who are building bots, they want people to get, get started with using these bots right away, right? Uh, for now, uh, for any application developer who who wants a seamless experience and a first-run experience with the user already signed in into their app, it has the liberty to basically go and utilize the uh, the AD SDK that we have, and with a very few parameters that they can specify in their app manifest, they can basically make use of the AD token that their app will basically be able to acquire through Teams itself. So really, really encourage our third-party app developers to make use of this capability. The capability allows you to actually use the identity that the team that the user is signed into Teams use the same identity for them to basically get access to the resources in the SaaS application of the developer as well, right? So I think this is something that was earlier, uh, it first went live on desktop, and uh, a few days back, we actually announced that this is now live on our uh, mobile clients as well. So uh, developers who are building hosted web experiences in tabs and in task modules, they can now basically use single sign-on using uh, uh, Azure Active Directory or across the various Teams clients uh, where the app can actually get rendered. And very soon, we will basically extend these capabilities to bots as well. Arvind, does that uh, help? Uh, yeah, of course. Question? That, that really helps, yes. Awesome. And I, I see questions on uh, like meeting extensibility. Uh, mm -hmm. The folks on the call would want to understand more and get clarity on how meeting extensibility works pre-meeting, mm -hmm. during the meeting, and post-meeting. Okay, got it. So let me actually uh, uh, quickly go and do a deep dive into meeting extensibility. Uh, so if you look at meeting extensibility, uh, uh, just to kind of like uh, uh, you know set set the set the context again, right? Uh, Microsoft Teams already has a very rich meetings experiences, and you know given that in the in the uh, you know in this uh, testing times we are all working uh, you know remotely, we are really really spending a lot of times on you know uh, collaborating over meetings, taking decisions over meetings and Teams has been like a lifesaver and a game changer in this context in the post-pandemic world, right? Uh, Microsoft Teams uh, uh, already sees, you know, uh, a, a huge number of people every day uh, utilizing the rich meeting experiences across the meeting lifecycle uh, and also and, and continues to basically, uh, you know, enrich the end user experience beyond chat, file sharing, uh, and, and so on and, 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 and so forth. Uh, what was basically missing so far was the users to be able to interact with their SaaS application and use the information in their SaaS application for decision making while they are actually in the meeting, right? So what the what we actually did was we basically looked at the entire meetings lifecycle right from the very beginning and end to end when we basically explored meetings uh, the the entire meetings life cycle we basically figured out that there are various touch points in this life cycle where bringing an app or a saas experience into the meeting is going to be extremely extremely helpful for the users of these meetings on microsoft teams right so until now uh, developers could actually integrate, uh, you know, their uh, their uh, SaaS applications plus their, you know, custom built line of business applications with chats and channels, right? That's where the workflows and that's where the collaboration used to basically happen. We are now expanding post Ignite these, uh, you know, the uh, the app developers to basically integrate with meetings and build workflows while they are actually, uh, you know, uh, meeting other people and collaborating with other people on uh, audio video call. Uh, uh, 
uh, on 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 teams right so i think this is how the meeting extensibility uh, uh, you know uh, uh, kind of overview the meeting extensibility feature overview actually looks like so the goal is to basically uh, enable applications to integrate with every step of the meeting life cycle right so, and and be able to basically create scenarios which are unique before which is pre meeting during which is in meeting and after which is post meeting experiences right so the the way we basically want to break the entire uh, you know meeting life cycle is is simply pre uh, during and post and with meeting extensibility we are allowing developers to actually create experiences and attach their saas applications to each of these significant stages of the meeting life cycle right the second uh, 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 you know point or the governing principle uh, that we had in mind while bringing this feature is meeting awareness right so the application uh, we are basically allowing app developers to build experiences and scenarios where they are deeply aware of the meeting context itself so as you can see on the slide the apps are not just uh, existing in a meeting they know and the developers can basically tweak customize the experience to be able to meet the experiences for tailor built or custom built for the meeting itself so if you use the same app outside meeting and then you use the same app inside the meeting right uh, the experience the developers can actually choose to have two different experiences right and then the third one is basically talking about in this uh this pre during and post meeting experiences what are the various surface areas where these apps can basically uh you know uh, uh come and present themselves for the users to interact with on right so there are three surface areas and that's basically something that the next slide actually talks about really really well there is a pre and post meeting tab this is typically when you are scheduling a meeting inside of teams uh you can basically uh, you, you have the chat tab you have the uh, the uh, the uh, the attendees tab and you 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 have the files tab you can now add uh tabs where you can basically bring in the uh, saas applications into uh, pre and post meeting experience itself so think of it as when you are scheduling the meeting itself you can basically bring in an application that can present the user things like agenda things like you know uh, pre meeting experiences things that they have to catch up on before the meeting right and then that same tab can actually be used after the meeting has been completed because the context is something that the developers are aware of while they are building the application they can actually use the very same tab after the meeting has finished to surface things such as you know recordings for the meetings or you know uh, transcripts for the meetings you know uh, any kind of uh, you know action items that have happened from the meeting so the same surface area can serve as uh, uh, pre meeting and post meeting it can serve as like the natural or the uh, the the kind of information that it actually brings to the user can basically change depending on what is the life cycle or the li or the stage of the meeting life cycle itself right the second one is basically an in meeting tab what we mean by in meeting tab this is basically when the users are actually interacting in the meeting which is the during meeting life cycle if you have to basically fetch information if you want to basically you know uh, interact with some uh, uh some content which is basically there in the tab uh, or sorry in the app you can basically use the in meeting tab uh, without obstructing the meeting experience the core focus of the teams experience is still meeting you can still see people on video you can still see uh, you know the the content that is actually being shared if there's a powerpoint that is being presented or a screen which is being shared but in the right side you will have a sidebar which basically allows you to consume information and interact with information uh, from the companion app that has been brought into the meeting and the third one i have already spoken about it is the in meeting notification which is a game changer for 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 folks to actually provide inputs collect feedback take actions and basically improve decision making uh, and and you know learning during the meeting uh, uh, area itself so like quickly walking through uh this is how the uh, pre and post meeting experience actually looks like so while you are scheduling a meeting you can actually go click on the uh, on the plus icon before the uh, meeting starts and you can actually discover apps within the familiar add tabs experience so you can basically go and pick up an app which is uh, uh which which allows itself to be added in the meeting scope you can choose the app and then that is the app which basically gets pinned as a tab in the meeting invite itself so if you open the meeting in invite inside of teams that is something which is basically uh, the the going to show up in the meeting invite as a tab itself now because i spoke about the fact that apps are aware of meeting context you can actually see that for two different people the app developer can actually build a different experience right so for an organizer and for a participant both of them can see different uh, pieces of information 
this is how the in meeting experience looks like so while you are in a meeting you can actually go and click on the app icon in the meeting bar on top and what presents itself is a quick sidebar a nifty sidebar that allows you to actually uh, you know the, the the right pane actually allows you to 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 kind of you know uh, interact with different uh, you know contextual experiences that the application developer can build while you are actually in the meeting itself right so this is both for consumption as well as for engagement right uh, uh, the third one that we've already covered is the meeting uh, notification bubble. This allows you to basically in the meeting context collect feedback. So I think this is how these are the three surface areas that we are starting with. I'm sure that as we progress on the meeting extensibility roadmap, we will be able to add more and more surface areas and bring in more capabilities. But the key principles remain the same. The app is context aware. The app has surface areas across meeting life cycles that they can basically uh, you know use the, the developers can actually use to bring in the right information at the right time and the whole experience has been crafted in a way that meetings are front and center your audio video that is front and center the app doesn't take over the meeting the app is a companion with the meeting i i hope that that was a uh, that was a decent overview uh, yeah that that really helped uh, just on top, adding to that, like you explained a scenario on, on meeting extensibility. So can voice be used during the meeting to create tasks and decisions? So that's uh, a question and an interesting scenario. That's uh, actually that's a good. Question. That, yeah, that, that that's actually a good scenario. So while the out of the box meeting extensibility features that we uh, that we have uh, uh, announced just now uh, does not kind of uh, have voice as an input or voice as a capability, but there's nothing actually stopping you to actually do that today itself. Like you don't have to wait for meeting extensibility to be out. Uh, there is basically uh, you know uh, something that we call as meeting uh, bots. So if you basically refer to our documentation, the Teams developer documentation you will actually see that teams already supports callings and meetings bots right now this colleagues and meetings bots allow you to actually bring in a custom bot add it as an attendee in a, uh, uh, in a meeting and just like humans uh, since bots are at par with humans in uh, in the in the teams platform right a bot can actually attend the meeting uh, get access to the audio and the video stream for the meeting, right? And uh, that uh, is, is something that the the uh, the application can basically process in the back end and make use of that to do a number of scenarios like transcription. Uh, you can also do you know note taking. You can basically extract keywords. You can basically identify who's speaking, who's the speaker, uh, was there an action item over there, and basically kind of transcribe and then make intelligent derivations out of what the bot is actually listening from. So this is something that is uh, that is actually available uh, uh, today itself uh, by bringing in a bot into a meeting that you need to explicitly add, right? Uh, you can definitely you know uh, uh, do these intelligent uh, post processing or a real time processing of the meeting itself. That's something that teams will not take care of. The application developer is supposed to actually do that, but uh, the scenario is definitely possible. That's. I know a few third party cool. partners are all already building uh, using the bot that yes, is, absolutely that is attending the meeting and trying to capture yep. the context in the meeting and then derive to do our tasks out of it. Correct, correct, correct. absolutely, uh, absolutely. And there are, there are far, uh, you know, uh, a lot more engaging uh, scenarios that, you know, can be built by uh, merely, you know, processing the audio and the video stream itself, right? Uh, uh, so, I mean, those are all uh, in line with our vision for intelligent meetings, uh, what meeting accessibility allows for uh, uh, for you know uh, developers to do post ignite is actually bring in richer experiences. Like earlier, it was only bots that could be added to the meetings, but we all know that you know on Teams platform, the surface area is uh, is is actually beyond just bots and conversational experiences, right? So we are, with meeting accessibility, we are now allowing for far richer applications, which are a combination of canvas as well as conversational experience. Got it. Cool. I know we are about on time. We can take probably one last question uh, and then wrap up. Yeah, I think we've answered most of the questions. There Great. are no other new questions that have come. No up. new questions on chat as well? Yes. No, not yet. Okay.
that's good so we are i think we are right on time uh, just in closing i think uh, first of all thank you uh, folks who actually joined us for this uh, for this ask the expert session uh, uh, thanks to uh, arvin for picking up questions and having an insightful discussion uh, do uh, watch out for uh, the uh, the rest of the ignite sessions and also uh, check out the on demand recordings i think recordings for all our uh, breakout sessions and uh, uh, and the uh, and and the ignite uh, session should be available within i think 24 to 48 hours uh, after the session concludes so you can always go back and as long as you are registered on the ignite website you can go back and basically catch up the on demand sessions we're always there to basically help you feel free to get in touch with your microsoft representatives if you want to build an engaging experience on teams platform uh, arvind and i from teams engineering uh, will be happy to work with uh, uh, with all our partners who are looking to build uh, uh, better apps on teams thank you and with that uh, We'll wrap up. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.